Hi. This short video can, uh, well, apply to my electrical students, drivability students, even steering suspension students. What I've got here is a uh, steering column assembly out of a uh, Hyundai. The ignition key locked, or I should say the lock tumbler locked, so the owner could not turn the key at all to get this thing going. I tried some of the usual tricks there, sprayed some lube in here, took a hammer, hitting the key here as I was attempting to turn it, and yes, I was absolutely certain that I turned the steering wheel to make sure the lock didn't have me locked in. Uh, so I could not get it to free up. So it was about 40 miles away from here and it was uh, freezing rain and snow. So I thought I'd save the owner the money for a tow. So I went ahead and pulled the steering column out. Really didn't take all that long at all. I brought it into work here and this is what I've got. So what I wanted to do is to remove the uh, lock assembly right here. So the ignition key lock assembly uh, or lock cylinder. Now, in order to do that, you've got to press a tab, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, in order to press the tab, the key, in this case, needs to be in the accessory position, and I couldn't do that. So, rather than attempting something brutal and possibly damaging the lock of the steering column, I wanted to take this housing off. Okay, so this housing holds the uh, ignition lock cylinder. It also is uh, where the ignition switch lives, and then the lock assembly for the column is right in here. So, just two bolts right here, but we're going to zoom in on this a little bit. All right, you'll notice that these two bolts, well, there's no hex. There's no slot. These are breakaway bolts, or shear bolts, or tamper-resistant bolts, whatever you want to call them. I used to deal with these about 100 years ago when I worked at the carburetor shop. They used to put parts on carburetors and they would uh, snap these things off. And back then when I wanted to take them off, it was pretty easy. Took a hacksaw blade or a little cutoff wheel and I cut a groove in it and used a screwdriver. Well, these may be a little difficult to see, but these are recessed, right? So they're down in this housing right here. Now, in order for me to uh, cut it with my whiz wheel, I ended up putting a big groove across there and I didn't want to damage this housing. Uh, my little uh, Dremel cutoff tool isn't small enough to get in there either. So what I ended up doing was using my uh, handy dandy old spring-loaded center punch. I used this back in the day when I was doing a lot of carburetors. So now I've already removed this. Okay, you can probably see that there are some marks on there. Uh, I didn't think about filming it. All I was in a hurry to do was get the thing apart and get the part ordered. Now, if you take the center punch, you might want to start. Just make a good hole or a good divot there, if you will. And then you're going to take and hold your punch just off to the side. Okay, now these are counterclockwise to remove. So we're going to hold it down at an angle somewhere about like that. And we're going to push. Now, you can see that this thing moved. It did not break free that quickly when I took it off initially. Okay, but you kind of get the idea. Again, sorry I didn't film as I was doing this the first time around, but again, it wasn't, uh, wasn't in the forefront of my mind there. What I wanted to do was get this pig back together again and uh, get these folks on their way. Uh, I've since ordered the part. It's supposed to be in in a couple days, so Here's the video in the meantime while we wait. Okay, now this is going to lift out of there. There he goes. Now, one thing I need to caution you very strongly, if you're doing this on a bench like I am, you want to make sure that that steering wheel does not turn. If I allow that steering wheel to turn too far, then I'm going to break that clock spring for the airbag and the steering wheel controls. Don't want to add any more cost to this thing. So make sure that doesn't spin. Okay, so here's what I did with this. Took them out, looked it over pretty good, and I ended up removing this. This is a light ring, and in some cases, this is the ring that your uh, transponder key is going to talk to. So I'm going to pull that off, and then I'm going to beat on this part with a hammer while I attempt to turn the key. And that's what I did, and it actually broke free. So I'll go ahead and take it apart. I'm going to smack it with a hammer. I've already done it, but I'll show you. 
few other things that I did while I had the assembly on the bench. You can see where I, I did hit it. I persuaded it. I didn't take a real heavy pam hammer to it. I took a uh, ball peen. I don't think it was more than two, three pounds. And I just tapped on it while I was turning the key. I got it to break free, then I was able to move it. All right, now, for this, I need to have the key in the accessory position in order for me to depress this button. A little spring-loaded pin, it comes up and it keeps this from moving out, okay? Now, as I said, in order for that to be depressed, this needs to be in the accessory position. So, I'm gonna put the key in. Move it just to the accessory. All right, once it moves to the accessory then, I'm able to depress that. Okay, so I'm gonna take this pin, push him down, gonna depress it, and then I'm going to pull the lock assembly out. Just like that. Okay, so lock cylinder has been removed. Now I can set that off the side. That's what I'm going to uh, replace. Now, one thing to keep in mind here, with this in the accessory position, this part right here is going to align with that. So you need to make sure that that is where he needs to be and that you don't turn that. But I'm gonna do it because I'm gonna show you a few other things with this. Now, I have been told, I can't substantiate it, but I've been told some other things that may keep that lock from turning. Uh, maybe a portion of this lock mechanism that's in there. So I'm going to remove part of this and show you what's in there. Uh, I did disassemble it, look at it. I see no broken pieces, no parts floating around in there that could cause this thing to seize up. So let's look at that. Now, one other thing, let me mention. I've got a little solenoid right here, a little square box looking thing. That is going to keep you from uh, turning the ignition to the lock position and removing the key if the transmission is not in park. So when you put it into park, this little guy right here is going to come off and he is going to allow you then to turn that key all the way off. I'm going to pull him out of there just so I've got nothing sticking down in the way there. A couple screws. Now under here is going to be a little spring and a little dowel. So make sure that you don't lose that critter. That will go down there and there's a little groove that is on this rod mechanism that's in here. And again, that will keep you from turning it completely to the off position and removing the key if the vehicle's not fully in park. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the ignition switch. Okay, so ignition switch is right here. And I tell you what, if you look at uh, some of the information systems, uh, they say to remove this screw and just pull the switch out of there. They don't say anything about having your uh, key in the run position but your key needs to be in the run position in order to pull that out so again i found that out uh, the hard way i didn't break anything uh, i did tug on that slightly but i did not force it so what i ended up doing i put this guy back in i put the lock cylinder back in but if you move it to the on position that will line things up and you're allowed to take them out. All right, so there's switch, there's on. Would have been nice to know that before I pulled things apart the first time. And out he comes. All right, and we'll take a look. There we've got this kind of little slot. And on the end 
this. I don't know if it'll focus well. There we go. That has to align so I can pull it out. Now, I'll pull this completely out of there and I'll show you a little better. Right now, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pull this little piece right here out. Now, I'm going to have to make sure Okay, jiggle it. Out he comes. Now I'm going to have to, here's what locks the steering column. So I have to wiggle that a little bit. And as I do so, this will fall out. Now again, I can't substantiate it, but I'm told that some of these pieces may break off and jam this from turning. And then you can't turn the key. But that is definitely not the case here. This is a little bit of grease, so no problem there. And also in here, maybe a little difficult to see, but there is for the column, for the lock. Okay, so as I, you know, it's gonna be difficult. There. All right, so this portion of the assembly is going to rotate and it is going to pull that lock assembly out of the column. So that's how this works. Uh, so everything's free, nothing bad down in there. So I can reassemble this again. I'm going to again push that in like so. Get him in there. And I need to make sure that he sticks completely. There we go. I need to make sure that he sticks completely through here. There's a little bit of a shoulder. And there. So I've got him sort of kind of lined up. Put him in, give him a little bit of a twist there. All right. Now he's snapped down into place and that's where he needs to be. So now, all I have to do is wait for the new lock cylinder to come, I'll put it all together and put it back in the car. Now fortunately, this one does not need to have the ignition keys programmed. So this doesn't have an immobilizer in it and I don't have to worry about doing that. If I did, well, then maybe I would have had to tow it or maybe had a locksmith come out to the parking lot where this thing is now sitting. Hope you learned something. I know I did, so thanks for watching, and uh, we'll get this back on the road in a couple days. Bye.